welcome back it's Christine again with the artist pod and today we'll be talking about how to draw a cow as always I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop so let's get arting all right so um, here's the cow we're gonna start with the white so kind of like um, horses there's a point where kind of right in here sometimes they kind of the fur kind of converges to create like a little circular patch of fur that all kind of goes out in different directions so right it's just building up um right it's kind of it's building that out from that point and then building up from there and then of course as always it's one one uh, line in between others got a couple of colors we're going to be doing some um brown and white just you know Anyone who knows me knows I don't like designing black on black. So I'm not going to do that if I can avoid it. And since cows can be whatever color, well, not whatever color, but they don't have to just be black and white, um, then I'm not going to just do black and white. And then, you know, their, their coloration is different from cow to cow, right? So this comes straight down. And then this is angling over. It's actually why. I should have started there. I'm going to go ahead and erase, erase these guys. should have started there instead of at the nose because that changes how um, those lines are coming down, right? Because it's all angling off that point. It's interesting for animals that do, do that. Zebras will too. Zebras, horses, cows. Most everything else won't. Now the noses can be pink, especially on a cow that has brown. I'm not going to do that though. Um, but I think in most cases when a cow has brown, I think I've seen their noses pink. I could be wrong. Now, of course, we have the nostrils, right? So I'm stopping the lines as I get there, just as I am with the mouth. And then I'm also looping, changing that, that direction of those lines just that little bit, right? Bringing it down into the edge. This will help. Um, create that symmetry once we get there and then you know same thing on this side stopping those lines re-angling it just that bit as I bring it down and the same thing on this back side as long as you have a center point right it came straight down and once I had that center point I could change my line angle um, without worrying about any line conflicts I'm going to do the same thing to the chin right I have lines coming straight down in the middle, and then as we come off to the sides, re-angling those lines. Um, it just avoids line conflicts, because without it, you can easily get yourself tangled up. Which line conflicts, you know, and where you're adding highlight won't be a big deal, but where you're adding shadow, it can be. That was a little, sorry, a little harsh on my lines there. Putting too much pressure. All right, so then we have brown, I haven't really, I haven't really decided on what brown color to do. Yeah, that'll be good. A nice light brown here. Right, so we're just finishing out those lines that we've already started. Matching up with where the white was. And continuing in the angle that we started on it. Um, by the eyes, you know, Typically, you have on animals, um, we're going to have a bit that comes up and over. Of course, we have the eyelid as well. Right, so this eyelid. So by eyes, just being careful. It's what we always kind of look at, right? Bringing the line straight to the corner of the eye and then readjusting kind of around it. And then pulling straight off that back side and down. And up and over the eye up top until we re-angle ourselves to be more straight. And of course, um, I'm giving this cow eyelids. Uh, well, eyelids and uh, eyebrows, that's what I meant. And then again, same thing over here, right? You pull this straight over. Usually this is what I'll do, especially if you're drawing up from the nose, I'll angle till I get straight to the corner of the eye because that's a good turning point. Where above, you're going to start looping up. You can see what I'm doing here, looping it up because of how our eyes have, you know, their bulge in our, in our skulls. Once again, being careful by the eye. 
and that means it comes down. Once you have that sorted, everything else is, is relatively easy, right? And then following this down underneath the eye. All right, so I'm gonna finish out um, the brown and I'll be right back. Um, only gonna go in and make sure that by the eyes it's nice and clear as to what's happening. Be easier to sketch it in if I have a very clear line of where it's stopping. Which it kind of does now, but um, once I take this sketch layer off, it can sometimes be hard to see what I had intended on. Okay. Right, so that one that goes, the eyes are very clear. Okay. Now we're gonna start with, um, might as well leave the brown, I guess. Start with highlights and shadows. So my light source is gonna come from above and to the right. As always, that means above and in front of, not behind or next to. So all edges are in shadow, but obviously there's a deeper shadow on the backside. Um, and to do that, Right, I'm just putting very light pin pressure. So just this very light pin pressure as I come up. This isn't a deep shadow on this side. So it's not a whole lot happening. And then of course, by the eyebrow, that usually isn't there on, if I were drawing this realistically, um, same is true up top, right? All edges in shadow because that's how you create that rounded effect. Well, and it depends on your light source. If my light source was straight off to the side, then that side would be in highlight, but it's not, so therefore all edges are in shadow. Uh, forehead's gonna have less shadow than once we get further down because it's the, it's not as blocked up um, so not going to have a whole lot here, but as we get down further, once again, being careful by the eye, then we're going to have a whole lot more shadow happening now. Typically on a drawing like this, or in real life, I should say, cow's eyes on the far side of the, of the the light source, right, just under the eye here where the cheek is, would be in shadow. I often will give a little burst of highlight um, just because our eyes are drawn to eyes and it doesn't really hurt. It'll catch our attention and it won't really look out of place when I do it. You just have to make sure you blend it in. Right, so this side is in shadow. Um, so I'm going to pull that shadow up a little bit more. Now some of it will be highlight, but it's giving me a nice big runway. It's easier to add highlight than it is to take it away. So I want to start with more shadow and then, um, I can, you know, not only can I put more pin pressure to add highlight, I can add more lines, which makes it a little easier to control. Okay. So that's it for the shadows. Everything else should be you know, highlight, and that's full pin pressure. You can see that difference. So then the trick here is just making sure as I get close to an edge where that would be blending in, I release my pin pressure, and I'm gonna rely on more lines to brighten up an area. Because otherwise, it'll be harder to blend these, these lines in. Right, the harder I push, the blockier the line. So to blend it, I don't wanna do that. But the rest of this, you know, aside from that, aside from the blending, the rest of this is in highlights. I'm going to finish this up and I'll be right back. The only thing I haven't done are the eyebrows, really. I mean, the, I keep getting them mixed up. Boy, I think I know what things were called. The eyelid. I think I haven't done is the eyelid here, so we're just going to do that real fast, just by giving it a little burst on both sides. So 
making sure it's also filled in completely and doesn't have a weird there we go now this side's just a little blocky so I'm fixing the blockiness so it doesn't look like it's a square Okay. And we'll get the, the ears later. So now for the white. Um, same thing, right? So we have that little bit of white with that's uh, in shadow on the edge over here. So we're gonna match the shadows we've already done at the depth we've already done, right? This color change shouldn't change what's happening with the shadows. Same on that back side, right? The forehead has more highlight to it than um, elsewhere. Um, and then as far as shadow goes, you know, the edge of the nose for sure, and then underneath as well. Right, all the way under, going to be in shadow. Usually you can kind of see where the nose is, but I'm having trouble, so just pop that on. It'll be fun. Um, this would be two, because it's going into a, a recess, right? So therefore, so that's a good line to have all this on the other side of that nostril. I may not keep that, but to start off with, it'll be a good sort of line in the sand of where to transition highlight to shadow. Right, the very light pin pressure. And then bring it all the way over. And then again, all edges in shadow, right? So even this side would be in shadow because you have that edge of the mouth, of the nose, of the whatever you call this thing. <laughs> and then, right, this is dipping down, so this would have a little bit of a shadow. And then the chin, I'm gonna do the whole chin in shadow. Just, I do this sometimes, not a lot of space, so it'll be a little easier for me to work with. Sounds like I'm gonna have a storm. I don't wanna lose power. It's a good reminder to save as often as you can, especially in the summer, and my AC's out right now. Um, unfortunately. Uh, especially in the summer, my Photoshop sometimes crashes. I guess my computer just overheats just that little bit. So save often, because it is a very sad day when you do not. So just that light pin pressure. Um, and then it's easier for me to control the highlights going to be on the chin, because there will be highlights on the chin. Um, but we'll, you know, draw that in slowly and gently. All right. Um, and then the rest of the rest of this should all be highlight, right? So that's that full pin pressure, just like before. I opted to do the light second because um, it's easier to blend in a color with the lighter color. Right, so if I'm gonna do some blending so that the, the fur looks more natural, it's easier for me to do it with the white. And I, instead of doing it on another layer, I could just do it this way. Um, I'm not working on blending it right now though. So right now it's just about filling in the rest of that. Right, at that, and that's all coming off on that center point. So it is really just a matter of having these lines come in from that center point and off and down and to the side and Seems weird, but that is that is what their fur does. All right, so I'm gonna finish the rest of this white, which is just that full pin pressure, and I will be right back. All 
Alright, so um, we're going to get the ears, um, but first I'm going to finish out just this little bit leading up to the ear as it pushes into it. Right, and then um, as we do the ear, what we're going to be doing is pushing in. So cows, it depends on the cow, but um, you know, a lot of animals will have white fluff in their ears. Cows will sometimes have the, their fluff will be the same color as, um, you know, the, the color that whatever they are, whatever color are on the ears, which right is in this case would be brown, so they could be black. And so instead of having like white fluff, their fluff is, um, you know, the color that's, that's kind of already here. So, um, Right, as I do this, I'm going to do some light right through here as I'm pushing out here into straight, right, you know, straight and curves so that we don't create any line conflicts. This will be easy to push the fluff out if we do it this way. And then we can push out. And we're doing this on both sides. So some animals, right, they have the fluff on both sides. We're going to do that with the cow. And just kind of have it meeting down here. Right, and then the fluff is a little bit looser, longer strokes. Um, doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be, you know, looking good. <laughs> well, it should look good, but doesn't have to be like perfect. And then because it's a little bit more cartoon, you know, it has that benefit too. Um, all right. I'm gonna push it in just a little bit more. So that there's only a little bit of dark in the middle. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side, right? So we're going to finish out this, these edges, that light, light pin pressure. And I'm doing all of this in light pin pressure on the ears for right now. Um, there is going to be some highlighting on it, though. This side's a little bit more primed to um, push in, but still doing light pin pressure as we get those edges and push in. Right, just, and then pushing up at the top. That gives us the room needed to go straight and then curve inward from there. Same thing over here, although again, a little easier because it's kind of already pre-built that way. Right, so just pushing that in light pin pressure for right now. Strokes don't have to be straight or even. They can go in different directions. Still kind of in the same direction, but you know, different directions otherwise. And then pushing in like we did on the other. So making sure they're equally um, pushed in and this one maybe even a little bit more so because right we have um, it's on the side of the light source so okay so with the ears in we'll add those highlights right uh, kind of in the middle so that's again putting on a little bit more pin pressure but mostly just adding more lines in kind of in the middle um, on the top, doing it over here, down towards where it'd be connecting back in to the ear down here. And then more towards the, the still kind of in the middle because the right all edges are in shadow, but more towards the tips on this side because that's that's aiming up, but it is going into a dark recess, so keeping that in mind. And then obviously underneath you would have shadow kicking in on this side. We already have that bit of shadow happening. A little bit of highlighting happening here. Not going to be much. Right, again in the middle. And as it goes towards the tip, backing that off. And then again on this side, more towards those tips. All right. And then, um, 
just making sure all of these loose um, lines are connected back in. I'm not doing something crazy like they currently are. No independent lines. All right. Now for the eyes. I'm going to start with the white. It'll be the quickest and easiest to do. Right, so that's just following the iris around. But like with any part of the eye being careful, on both sides, following that iris around. Oh, but be mindful of how I've drawn that. And then I'll pop that back off. Yeah, I'm just filling in the rest of that from there. So I'm going to do this with light pin pressure on both sides. Um, because, you know, you don't have a lot of space to work with, so I don't want to um, overwhelm it. And then I'll add a little bit of highlighting, but it won't be a whole lot. It's going to be just a little splash. Right, so finishing up there. And then making sure that looks straight and doesn't have a weird angle to the eye. Okay. And now adding just a little bit of burst here. Oh, maybe that's a little too much. <laughs> I don't think much. And um, more towards the middle because the bottom's going into darkness and then the top, that edge, our uh, irises always have a black line around it, so making sure that kind of goes into darkness. Same thing over here, just a little bit. It's not a whole lot. And then we have um, the eye itself, which I don't think I chose. No, I didn't choose a color, but we're going to go with brown. So if I use, I'm just going to flash this brown real fast. And then um, change it, yeah. And make sure I'm on the right layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw in pupil on both sides. All right, make sure that it's kind of looking at us. And I'll I'll be using the um, elliptical maquis tool to make it a bit straighter afterwards. So then I'm just going to, um, you know, fill in the whole thing, doing a circle expanding from the pupil, right? You can see how I'm just pulling lines in from the pupil all the way around the eye, above, below, just expanding that line. So I'm going to do that with both eyes and I'll be right back. So now that we have the eyes in place, First, we're going to come in here again to that elliptical monkey tool. I'm going to create just a little bit of an oval, get it nice and lined up, and then I'm going to hit the backspace to erase. I'm going to select inverse so that I can make this a nice clean edge, and I'm going to do that by angling my lines a little differently. They're not going quite in the same way, which um, sounds weird. It's almost like cross hatching at this point, but um, it definitely works to help make sure I've fixed any edges that I've missed on accident. And it won't really be that noticeable. And then I'm going to select inverse it again, reselect the elliptical maquito. You can see how much straighter that is. Bring that over to the other side, get it lined up and do the same thing. Backspace, select inverse, and then almost cross hatch the edges which cross hatching is just a, um, you make X's basically when you're drawing, right? You, you have lines going in two different directions to create shadow or highlight. Well, shadow typically, the way I draw adding lines creates highlight instead. So it's almost a reverse of that, but same idea. Just finishing that out and then select and deselect. And we have the pupil nice and clean. And then we're gonna have the highlights. So both sides, you're going to have a burst of light on the opposite side of the light source, right against the pupil, right? So this is a harsh highlight. I'm putting full pin pressure as I do this. Same thing on this one, which of course, because it's on the side of the light source. So it's going to go down the side and underneath. It's kind of like if you have like a coffee cup and light is giving an extreme edge 
you know, you'd have one side going into the shadow and the other side catching that light. So this side, the side of light source is going into shadow um, against the pupil, but away from it, you have that highlight. You're gonna have highlight going into shadow on the edge of the iris, but that highlight's gonna carry over all the way underneath the eye, all the way down. And then, you know, going into shadow on the edge. Um, and then it's going to be in shadow basically everywhere else, but this is going to be a brighter shadow than up top. So I want to make sure that as I'm adding the shadows that I don't undercut um, myself. So this will need to brighten up a little bit more. I'm just sort of making sure it definitely fades out at the edge. Right, and then fading this out so, you know, and the, that burst. I don't want that to go from highlight to shadow all of a sudden, but to be a gradual decline. But you can see that's still in shadow even though it's brighter. And then, you know, pulling this over and tapering off that highlight as we bring over towards the edge of the pupil. And then really backing off the pin pressure up top. Um, so that it's all in shadow. So this would be because the eyelid, um, eyelid is casting a shadow on uh, the eye, right? So the eyelid, um, our eyes, because of how they're, they're shaped, the way our bone structure works, it'd be casting a deep shadow against the eye, depending on the light source. So above can typically be darker. Right, so and just sort of fading all of that in. And again, this should be brighter than that, allowing this to fade in without it looking harsh. And then um, I can brighten up this section by adding in more lines. I really like brighten that up. All right, so I'm gonna do um, the same thing on the other side. Uh, you just have a little bit less space where the highlight is, more space where the shadow is, but otherwise it's the same thing, and I'll be right back. So, well, it looks like a sad little cow. Um, the last thing to do is to add the light flare. So I'm going to take the, um, well, first I'm going to change the color to that off-white I always use. I'm going to take the elliptic wand key tool, make a little bit of a circle, making sure to overlap within the color and the um, pupil. And then I'm going to just fill with the foreground color. Move it to the other side, line it up roughly in the same spot, and fill it with the foreground color. Being mindful that when I say same spot, that it is the same spot in relative position. So if the eyes aren't exactly even, it's the same spot to the bottom of the pupil. Right, so this one needs to be a little higher. Yeah, and I get it as high as possible where the highlight is because the light source is coming from above, so that makes a difference. All right, so that's how you draw a cow. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.